So, Merlin, when did you do our program? A um, year and a half ago. A year and a half ago. Yes, roughly that. Yep. I think it was January 2009. Sounds exactly right. Sounds like about <laughs> two and a half years ago. Okay. Okay. Yeah, I'm happy <laughs> Time flies that. when you have fun. It just keeps sneaking on by. And Merlin, you were a bit of a sceptic. Not a bit. <laughs> the major sceptic. Skeptic. We, in our bonus program, we always say hands up those who are sceptical, and you get most people, like this is about 70 percent. And who's a real sceptic? Merlin. <laughs> and we do a little thing with the sceptics. But he was the major one. And he sent his brother along uh, the month after, or a couple months later, and we asked who's a sceptic. He put his hand up. Who's the next sceptic? It's exactly the same runs in the family. And then they sent their sons along, and each one of those won the prize of the sceptic. So it's virtually two <laughs> runs sons. Runs in two. the family. It does. The apple never falls far from the tree. <laughs> exactly. So, um, and his father, we had the hate site, so his father found the hate site, said, get off the bus, get off the bus. These people are a cult, they're criminals. And he arrives at the, at, the, at the function and says, this is terrible, I shouldn't be here. And, uh, at the Hunter Valley, at the Hunter I Valley, spoke yes, Zolte, exactly. yeah. I said, if I can't speak to the master, who's next in charge? So they gave me Zolte. And, he doesn't uh, speak a word of English. That was so good. I think that's why they gave it to me, because he's Polish and can't speak any English. <laughs> so that was Roy's complaint department. <laughs> anyway, we said in, 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 in the abundance program, it has a 14-day money-back guarantee. So it says, if you're not happy, just send us a thing and we send you back the money. So worst case is, you get your money back. Anyway, there's nowhere to go. The bus is gone. Yeah. <laughs> I had no transport, so I had to stay. There you go. Anyway, 90 days later, what happened? Uh, well, just before we go down that road, there's a letter from the tax office. We've all signed that confidentiality in here yes, that it stays. Been. Has that been? Has that been all signed that has and been documented? Signed up. And Merlin is masterful with his tax. He declares all income, every, and cent. claims and claims all deductions possible, which there's many of. Exactly, it's a major one. So, 90 days. What happened? Uh, the biggest gift in the room. Uh, in the first 90 days, um, I was fortunate enough to make a million dollars. I think it's actually deserving of a clap myself. <laughs> <laughs> now, how did you do that? I'll just get this one to get it. How do we want to get this on? How do we get this done? In fact, we made him the success of the year, just for the biggest skeptic. You want to put the last down, Mr. Seamus. And how do we do this? Because? As the art collector, there's a the big piece of art I bought as one of my rewards. So. Exactly, exactly. And when we played the, um, the movie of um, Wall Street, I maintained that um, he was playing the part. Doesn't he look like it? <laughs> and um, Michael Douglas tries to take him off, but yeah. just can't quite get it. You know what I mean? <laughs> Nearly, but definitely. Close. Yep. So what was the why? Uh, well, well, my why was, um, you know, my family, my children, uh, in giving them a, a better life and uh, being able to go forward with the knowledge that I got through abundance um, uh, was, was the why that, uh, that I wanted to do that. Mitchell, my son that you can see there, uh, he came on the program with me. Uh, Mitchell um, wanted to be a professional rugby player. He came along, had a chat with Roy, they had some, some dialogue together and Mitchell finished up playing uh, for the Queensland University team and uh, he's now in the Reds Academy and he was voted best on the ground in the grand final last year. So he's achieving the goal uh, that he set out and that was the why um, that I wanted to give him. And I think, what, you know, I'd just like to share with everybody in this room, your why will give you a desire and your desire will give you a goal. And if you've got those three pieces there and you put them together, you are definitely going to be a success in whatever you do. Um, and it's not... A Let's get that down. Let's get the lights up so we can get this recording on properly too, Seamus. Thank you. Right, all of them up. That's great. So let's say that again so they can get it down. I can't remember. <laughs> the why. The why will give you desire. Yes. And your desire will then give you a goal. And if you have a structured goal, you're going to be a success in whatever you take on and whatever you want to do. Um, and it's not a, a desire or a wish to say, I wish to be wealthy, I wish to be successful. 
you really do have to have that desire and that goal pulsating uh, within you so there's no fear of anything other than achieving that goal and achieving that desire. And I think, I don't know if Roy said it on um, you know, this uh, seminar that you're attending, but he told us a story of um, a, uh, a fleet of ships that went across to one of the countries to fight a war. They were totally outnumbered. They were totally out positioned because they were sailing in and they'd already taken their positions um, on the beachhead. So it was a very, very difficult task to, to have a victory with all those obstacles in front of you. And what the, uh, the general of these uh, attacking army, when they beached their ships, they burnt the boats so there was no retreat. And that's how that expression, you have a burning desire. And I don't think there's anything more of a burning desire to win than uh, not having a retreat plan in place. And that's what you've got to do when you have a goal um, and a plan and a desire. And that's um, what you'll learn uh, here doing the abundance and doing it with Roy. Well done. If we could add one word to that too, and that's action. Action's everything. In other words, all wealth is precise action. You have the desires and all the wonderful things unless you take action. And we're going to talk a bit, a bit about what Merlin does as far as action is concerned. And I, I think one of the... Uh, oh, sorry. No, we'll just, we'll, yep. you, you, you take over, Roy. Okay. Well, we're just over here on this... Um, uh, uh, just after the why, we got to the next slide, which sort of covers a few things here. You survived? I was very lucky. I survived the abundance plan. I didn't think I would. I, anybody in the room who's done abundance... You start at 6 and you finish at 11 p.m., 6 a.m. to 11 p.m. So you guys have got it pretty easy and um, only working until 7 o'clock in the afternoon. I mean, yeah. hey, you know. Well, 6 to 11, that only sounds like to me, you know, like five hours or something. Yeah, it's really. a half day when yeah, you right. normally go on your abundance course. <laughs> and did it with your family and son and, children and your wife and uh, investment uh, direction. Wanted a mentor uh, I, to join I the think voice. this, uh, having a mentor is immensely important because it cuts out a lot of your mistakes. Um, I was in the um, mentoring program with Roy uh, and I could phone him up with an idea. Um, I didn't have to make the mistakes, which mistakes can become very uh, expensive, very costly. costly yeah. Not only do you lose dollars, you lose time in your, in your planning on where you want to get to. So having a mentor, having someone you can bounce an idea off, Everyone's got great ideas, everyone's got great plans, but things do get in the, in the road. And to have and to be on the mentoring program, um, so, and you might think it's expensive at the time, but in what I learned is that I got the mistakes um, cut out because I could um, phone Roy, have a chat with Roy um, at any stage. Uh, we looked at doing a, a project together and uh, the only time that Roy could see me was I think about 10 o'clock at night and he graciously came down to the site that we were looking at at 10.30 at night. Those sort of things are the, of what you get when you do have the, uh, the mentoring program and it's immensely helpful um, to have that. I remember that night very clearly and um, it was a, a transaction that was a fairly large, was, Milton had only just done this other one and made a million dollars and we're going to talk about that in a minute but this was his second transaction. It was a $5.8 million transaction, if I remember correctly, which is like, hello. You know, we teach people to do the first one, at, and we'll be talking about this tomorrow, where we're talking about, you know, five or $600,000 little house, little makeover, and here's he's looking at this $5.8 million. He says, Roy, you come and give me a hand at this one? You so, said start small. I got my gold program. I'm ready to... <laughs> so there's, there's uh, Josh, who's the real estate agent, and he's there at 10.30 as well, and he brought his daughter along, and he's got a beautiful Mercedes Sports. He's only a week old. And we look at this transaction, we had a look at the property and stuff. And just to show where he'd come from the skeptic, where Merlin had become this very generous man, he held the keys up to this car, it was like $250,000 car, and said, Josh, you do this deal and this car is yours. And you get it. this price that yeah. we want, not the price that they were requesting, um, you can have the car. He threw the yeah. keys to the to him, <laughs> God catches the keys. Is that a bit of an incentive? <laughs> a, a, three quarter, a quarter of a million dollar car, one week old. <laughs> $250,000.
down here found the value of being an extraordinary... Well, the, the, I suffered, and I'm sure a lot of people do in the room. Uh, we did the, the whole program, and it was the square that you go around to find out Which your... Which is the wealth profile. Wealth yeah. profile. Yeah. And surprisingly, it turned out that I was a lone wolf or a lone walker or whatever the... Lone wolf. Lone wolf, the term was. Anyone with blue suede shoes by themselves is going to walk alone. Let's get clear. <laughs> And um, so I did the program, but I couldn't really get myself into the flow of understanding to have a, a, a team around me of people that knew less than I did. And so I was... Um... <laughs> Can you see? <laughs> There's a natural understanding that everyone would only know less than him, because that's just <laughs> the way it is. So I wanted to surround myself with successful people, and I said... If we're all in the same boat, so yeah. how am I going to learn from them to do things? So I was really struggling with that concept of a dream team. And so again, going back to uh, the master, um, I said, uh, master, and he said, yes, grasshopper. No. <laughs> hey, I actually did, I said, I said, because Groucho Marx taught me this lesson. He said, never join a club that would have me as a member. So I said to uh, Master, um, I can't uh, get my head around this uh, dream team. He said, I can understand that and what I suggest that you do is to get a team of advisors around you. Uh, and by that, so my dream team switched to being a team of advisors. And so in s what I got around me then was a real estate agent, my bank manager, um, my solicitor. Oh, yeah. Uh, quantity surveyor uh, and they become my team of advisors so you don't have to share your profits um, if you can outsource um, and if you've got the ability and the uh, know-how to do it which you can always lean on Roy and the mentoring program um, you don't have to give away all your profits to a dream team you can have a team of advisors you can pay them on performance for their advice, and that's how that's what I put together. Um, the same concept of a dream team, but I had as a team of advisors, um, and I think, you know, I don't know whether someone else struggles with the dream team concept, but that's another way that you can put that together for yourself. Right. So from sceptic to commercial real estate extraordinaire. And I didn't put these slides together. <laughs> so don't, that's not the word I used. I am a total retard when it comes to computers. Um, Tyson put this together for me. I wouldn't have used that word. Um, but... Uh, there it is. There it is. And here we are, the step by step. So negotiate the price, arrange your due diligence, solicit to arrange the contracts, speak with bank about the finance, go to council and build the requi uh, building, building requirements, building costs, tender the lease process, engage the builder for building and subdivision, negotiate and find the contract price, and satisfy with the due diligence to go to contract. Now this is a story, a step by step, we're going to give you this as a little handout anyway on a, another form tomorrow, but it's how we actually go through the steps of, of dealing with a, a transaction. And um, this transaction was not very far from here, it was in Brisbane. Down, to, down Main Beach. Main Beach, and yeah. um, it was a, an empty no, it was a going concern. It was a uh, small hamburger shop uh, oh, that's right. yeah, down yeah. on the corner of Woodruff Avenue and the Esplanade in Main Beach. And what you did was subdivide it? Bought the, the business which they were wanting to get out of. It was a smallish type of convenience store, but they sold hamburgers, and newspapers and supplies because there was a caravan park not far from there. So it was a small going concern. Um, and the, the word that really I think is important up there is the due diligence. Um, as, as you get taught in abundance, control is much better than ownership. And that's how I learnt through the abundance program was to do a due diligence. And if you say to somebody you want an option, they retreat back into themselves. They go, mm, don't understand it, too difficult. But if you tell them that you want to do a due diligence on any property, they think, oh, well, he's going to look at my books for my hamburgers and my sales and so forth. So it gave me a period of time that I could uh, sign the contract 
as a due diligence process, and then I went through all of those other steps uh, that you see up there on the, uh, on the board. And that gave me around about 90 days. Um, and in the 90 days, what he could do is get a subdivision on that, put a wall up if you wish to, but more importantly, get the two tenants to take it over, which happened to be a 7-Eleven and Subway. Subway. He got those all signed up and committed before he committed. Yeah. So his takeout was done. Let's have a look at the numbers and what this thing looks like. Um, that's just the Gold Coast to say where it is, the 7-Eleven and the Subway. The original price that was asked was one million six hundred and and fifty thousand dollars, one point six five, and the building cost was about one hundred and about one hundred eighty for the for the uh, wall and all the rest, and legals and stamp duty seventy five, leases twenty five. So the total cost one point nine three million. Seven Eleven rental income, one hundred sixty five thousand. The subway about sixty grand. A total of two point two two hundred twenty five thousand dollars. Or 35 on 35 percent was 3.5 percent annual increase. annual increase on so the rent. That's an increase on the rent. So, if we do a quick calculation on a 10 percent yield, 2.25, can you see that is actually, you know, 220, 225,000 gives you a 2.25 million value. Now that's at at 10 percent, and 7 percent is a different number. Let's have a look. Yearly rent, and this, this is just a this is something that everybody should write down. This is the silver bullet of how you value businesses on a commercial um, sense. The yearly rent, is equal, the yield is equal to the rent divided by the purchase price times 100. So you take your total rent, divide it by your purchase price, multiply that by 100, and that will give you a percentage return on your investment. And you can work on any business anywhere in the world, anywhere in any state of Australia, and you can do it sitting down at the newspaper of a Saturday morning and work out what you want to have a look at. And this yield is a very, very important number, and it's more important than position, position, position. It's more important than any other thing. In other words, it's what the return you're getting on your investment. Now, now Merlin, you never had done this before. You'd never done commercial You said to start small. That's the way. So I yeah, took okay. your advice. Well, so check out how small it is. So at a yield, well, the yield for that is 11.7% return on that purchase price or that cost. And going through that, your total rent is 225. Divide by my completed <coughs> purchase price of 1,930. Multiply that by 100, and that gave me 11.7% yield on that investment. So, so if he did nothing else, just did that, can you see, is that a pretty good thing? Plus he's got growth, so he's got, that's his income yield, you know, he's got growth as well. And he's got a, a, um, escalation clause, clause in built in the rent. So the rent's going to go up at 3.5% annually. For 15 years. For 15 years. Can that make a difference? Okay, let's have a look. So we take that figure and whack in a few things like St George, the banks and the loan ratio uh, gives this, loan value ratio gives the bank, it, they work at like a 60% total bank valuation, 7.5% interest. So the bank valued the property at 7% yield. So when that happens, the bank value valuation works at 3.214 million. Very good number, yes? So that's what the, the business went from my cost of 1.9 1, 1 for a rough figure to the bank valuing it at 3.2. And then I, I still hadn't bought the property at this stage. And so then I said, what, what's your lending criteria on a 3.2? They said, we will lend, because it's commercial, we lend 60% of the value of the business, as opposed to your residential real estate that will give you 90%. Um, they lend it at 60%. So when you take the 3.2 um, valuation, uh, they will lend me 1.9, which was my purchase price. So it cost me 1.9 to do it. The bank would loan me 1.9. Uh, it, there was, uh, I think it turned out I did have to put some money into it, which I was disappointed. I think there was 2,000 that had to go into it. It's the same, yeah. I didn't. Yeah, never mind. These things, uh, you know, these are, these are the struggles. These are the kind of big rocks you've got to climb over. Okay. So then my rent was 225,000. 
to borrow 1.9 cost me 144668 as a repayment to the bank, which left me a net of 80000 per annum for the next 15 years on a $2,000 investment. And growing. Is that worth a clap? Pegasus, uh, um, uh, Aquarius, you have a very puzzled look on your face. Mm. All together. Mm. Mm. So it's it's not that puzzling. It's a formula that Roy gives you. Yeah, I was just wondering how you can spot something like that if you're driving down the street. And... I gave you that little formula. Well, the main thing is you've got to be you not just... a tortoise or a squirrel because they're not looking. Their hares see this because they're always visionary. They see things. That's why you've got to hold the hand of one of them. Exactly. Now, trust me. Look, look trust me. <laughs> I'm a hare. <laughs> yeah. So, this is his first transaction. And he rings me up and says, Roy, I've got this transaction here. It's now valued at 3.2 million. I haven't done it yet. <laughs> Here's all the numbers. They're all ready to sign. In fact, they've already... I had the signed con contracts. Yep. And what should I, should I sell it? I mean, there's a person with a super fund who wants to buy it at 3.2 at a 7% yield. So I'd get a million dollars, a million plus. I said, take it. You never, ever go wrong taking a profit. You never lose taking a profit. Anyway, Merlin, in his wisdom, was looking for income and assets and building that and was happy about the 80,000 net position coming through and knowing that that would constantly rise and there was another transaction and he only tied up $2,000 so it was his decision <laughs> so you kept it kept it yep and you still have it yep. but can you see he could cash in his chips anytime he wants in fact that that's already come up for its review the rental the rental re increase has already gone through, yeah. so it's all done. Should probably up this up because that eighty would be higher than that. Yeah, because they it's gone up three point five percent. They, on the total rent, not just yeah, that net. total rent. So, they pay all the outgoings, all the rates and taxes, every amount that is expended. So that is a net position. Okay, but well, wait, there's more. <laughs> The purchase price, there it is, and the cash, the cash in was $1,000, and look at that. You said start small. Yeah, yeah. But that's total rent. Okay, so there we go. And what else happened then? We've got to wait. Celebration. That was one of the things I really did listen to. Roy said, always celebrate your victories. So I said, right, let's do it. So he took himself off for three-month holiday skiing in Japan. Was that a good idea? This is not a destination, it is a journey here. Now, a couple of tips on this. We're going to talk about this tomorrow because we really want to get through this. We've got Matt and Liz waiting outside to do our presentation and we've got to have an afternoon tea somehow or other. Um, You've had it. Have we? Oh, okay. Well, we've got to have something. <laughs> we, what, what we need to do, we need to understand two quick things, and that is that you don't have to get a loan at 60%. You can get a commercial loan at yep. 65, Which you get is one at 7%, I mean, yeah. 70%, you can get one at 75, you can get one at 80. In fact, I've had them at 100%. Let's just hold your questions for a second. So money's not required and a money partner would do that. Do you think if we showed you that transaction and, and he needed some money to even do it, who'd be into the transaction? I'm just curious. Absolutely. This is a tra transaction in, <laughs> in, in Brisbane. This is your next transaction. This is uh, original. Pr uh, this is a garage. Uh, it was a service station um, in in Brisbane. It was one of those like the country outback service stations that was in a great position, but time had passed it by, and it had like the tin shed. I'm sure everybody's seen some on your drive through the country <coughs> servo that's got a demountable um, service station. Had a few pumps. The guy wanted nine hundred and fifty thousand for the site. And, uh, and for the business. Um, so again, um, it looked, when I did my sums on it using that formula uh, to get my yield, uh, where I think I could be, I went through that and worked out those steps that I went through on the due diligence process, again, putting that into the contract. It had a $1.3 million construction because I wanted to put it into a 7-Eleven, so I had to put the tilt up. I had to build the framework 
and then they fit it out on the inside and everything else. So basically you just give them the site with the building. Um, so when you go through that with your building costs, your legal stamps, um, your leasing agent, the total cost came in at 2335000 or 55, um, whatever it is there. Again, you can look at that figure and you get, you know, frightened by it. But when you start to drop the numbers out by that formula, um, I went to 7-Eleven and I said to them, giving you this site, this much traffic, um, this, this area and your pumps, what would you pay me for that? And they come back and they offer me 265000 uh, net rent per year um, for that and then I put another little $40,000 building a tilt up on it and I leased that to Noodlebox for $55,000 giving me a total of $315,000 rent per year on that property. Um, again I haven't bought it, it was still on the 90 day due diligence so I'd, I'd gone through to do all of that and it had a 4.5% uh, increase built in and the other little kicker that comes in with um, the 7-Eleven or the fuel is they pay you that check once a year up front so they give you 265000 at the start of your each year um, for your lease money so there's another little sweetener in there and if you do that same formula that I said the total price uh, my total rent of 315000 divide that by my total cost multiply that by 100, it gives me a 13.5% yield um, on, that, on that deal. Um, so again, you can drop those numbers through going to the bank, you know their lending criteria, what they want to give you. Again, I've only signed a contract, I've given them no money, no cheque, nothing. And the bank, again, 60% of the end lease is what they will um, do it on a 7% yield. So that formula, you just turn it around and you do it the other way where you 315,000 rent, divide by your 7%, which is the bank want 7% yield on it, multiply by 100, it values the business at $4.5 million. Um, and my cost was, um, well, okay, we'll just continue with that. Um, it, doubled the value of the site by $2,165,000. Um, so what that did, I only had to put in, uh, my total cost was 2.3 um, and my loan was 2.7. So effectively meant that I had 300 odd thousand dollars back in my pocket without putting $1 into the venture I got $315,000 out of my loan um, and I, I get a, a rent of 315. dollars So in my first year, um, I, uh, 300, I got 400, nearly half a million dollars back off the deal uh, in my pocket without putting a cent into it, which is what you get taught at Abundance. You don't use your own money. So okay. 100, 112000 worth of income from this net with the escalation 4.5 on the total rent and 4.5 on rent of 315000 That's quite a, a large sum of money on increases going on. But he's already getting 80000 on his other little deal. So he's now <coughs> over $200,000 in income that's coming in net to him. Plus he's picked up a million on the first transaction. And now he's picked up another couple of million, right? So he's now at three million. Who's liking the game so far? I'm just curious if this is a good game. <laughs> this is the biggest sceptic we have. I mean, it took us a while. Nothing works. Nothing works. <laughs> anyway, un this is his second transaction. Unhappy as he is with this, he says Roy's still wrong. So he's going to do a transaction to prove Roy wrong. Am I right? Yeah. He tries I said to I need to make Roy, I need to have one on Roy. So I want him to be wrong on something. So I'm going to do something that I don't understand. And that's the other important thing with your investments is to understand what you're doing and if you don't, come back to the master and it makes it a lot simpler process. So he's driving by this site because he'd heard about one we just did on a subdivision where people drive by sites all the time, Aquarian, and they, and they don't see it, they just keep driving by. This is a massive site at, um, uh, up the road, um, 
was a there was a development of hundreds of hundreds of acre one, blocks. When you see them all the time. Yeah. And the the lands for sale for two two uh, eighty or something. Two hundred eighty thousand. Yeah. I think it's on the next slide yeah. if we. And um, wait, there's more. What do we do this time? We went and did something. Oh no, that's, that's just a, a rounding up of that. That's okay. just finishing that off. Yeah, Where yeah. there was no money involved in that one, I got three or four hundred thousand back. Yeah, so you don't need any money. In fact, you get. Who likes? It's like when you go to the shop, supermarket and the, you buy things, and you give me a card, and they say, "Would you like some money out, cash out?" And you go, "Yeah." And then you buy things, and they give you money. Do you like that <laughs> idea? But this is when it's coming out of your bank account. This is when you buy something, and they give you three hundred thousand for buying it. Is that a good cash out? And there's no credit card required at all, or even a debit card. Actually, it's just there. So um, little celebration there. And where's he go? He buys a boat. <laughs> a, 50, a 50 foot. And, and was this when you bought the house too, about the same time? About the same time, yeah. Because he buys his house, in fact he invites us over for dinner, because he's having a good time. He buys his house, it's a beautiful house. It's like a $4.5 million house on the water, with because he had to park the boat. It's got its own marina. <laughs> and uh, it's one of those architect designed ones with the stories and everything. We, and we, Roger and I and Katrina, we come to dinner. And we had a lovely dinner that night. It was a lovely, lovely. It's a beautiful, ma magnificent house. It's got its own theatre. And the theatre room was all black. It had little starlights all in the roof, you know, so you could go and watch. The, you swear you're out on the outside. They had their own, all the bedrooms and study. They had their own study. They got the closets and this beautiful, and outside area where you can entertain and little a marina you go down there. Another, and a car park, and he's got a Maserati in the car park. And he opens, drives it, said, This is my Maserati. So this is really working. <laughs> and uh, I said to, to, to uh, Merlin, I said, so what's happening, Merlin? How come this is working? He said, I'll show you. Come with me. So we all follow him in this beautiful house. It's lovely. Get into his, his study. And there's his computer. Turns it on. And he plays a meditation that... He's downloaded from our program at the Abundance. It's one of the Abundance Meditations, where you're standing on the beach and you imagine your future. And Merlin plays this every morning at 5.30 a.m. It's about a 30-minute, 40-minute meditation. He's been doing that, he said, since he did our program. And he, he works from 5.30 in the morning till 8 o'clock in the morning on his stuff. And then his day's over. And he leaves whatever's going to happen to whatever could happen. He's actually finished work. Who would like a day like that? I'm just curious. <laughs> now, what's amazing about Merlin is a disciplined plan. Because it's not his normal thing to do such a thing. It's on his gold card. You're going to get gold cards tomorrow? He's a priceless. And why I want you to see Merlin is that this stuff works if you work it. It doesn't work if you don't. It's very simple. We're going to give you a nine-step plan to work these things, and one of them will be your goal card. It's very simple, nothing complicated. Just do it. So that's the boat. And I think do we had this is the this is the deal. This is the land. So you pick up uh, a pile of blocks of land here. Eight. Ask price two two hundred eighty thousand dollars. You purchase eight blocks at two hundred thousand each. He makes an offer. I'll buy them at two hundred because they're not selling. And a thousand dollar option on each block. Eight blocks, eight thousand dollars. I've now got eight blocks at two hundred. What's eight times two hundred? One point six million. So for eight thousand bucks, you now control one point six million dollars worth of real estate. And then he hires a real estate agent to sell them at two hundred and eighty as packages with incentive of forty thousand dollars per sale. Within 30 days, he sold eight blocks with a 30-day settlement. Cash only outlay is eight grand. Agent's commission, $320,000. Was the agent happy? And Merlin's profit, 320000 because it was the other 40000 The whole transaction was completed in 60 days. Now, what do you think most people do when they talk to an agent about the commission? They want to get it down. What we teach in abundance, because we're abundant, is to bring it up. Could you imagine how hard and how excited he was to sell something to make 40000 every time? They normally get about 2800 per block, and they got 40000 
could he afford to give 40,000 per blocker and 320,000 away, tax deduction? It's not even his money. Could he afford to take the 320,000? So this is his third transaction. How are we doing? <laughs> okay, so what are we up to here? Celebration, why not? <laughs> so there's the Maserati. That's a lovely car. Which I kept for about three months. And um, I made an offer to a real estate agent and he got it through and I threw him the keys. <laughs> yeah, the, the Maserati, Maserati was gone. <laughs> Uh, that didn't stay very long, that Maserati. This is the typical day for, for Kelvin. This is his... Uh, yeah. 5 a.m. wake up, listen to Roy's meditation, 6.30 breakfast, 7 o'clock planning and action, 8 o'clock finish for the day. Who <laughs> likes this idea? I'm just curious if this is good. <laughs> okay, so what's next? Learning so far. Set up your advisory team and have absolute clarity with your goals and communication. Uh, communicate this to your team. The amount of time you invest uh, in strategies will have a major impact on the so size of your profits. Which is you know, what you get taught. All your profit is in your purchasing. Your no, sales. Homework, due diligence, structure. Due diligence, get your structure right. Get your, you know your exit price because it's all worked out for you. So the more you put into your preparation, the less mistakes uh, that you'll have. If you're unsure about anything, ask your mentor help you uh, for help sooner rather than later. This is going to be very costly if you don't. So, uh, and live from abundance, okay? And so the reason why I came back, you know, to, because I'd done it two years ago, I uh, had started to lose what have you spoken about flow and everything? A little bit of that, A little yep. bit. What it does, when you get into your flow and you're comfortable in what you're doing, everything flows quite easily. It's not a difficult thing to do um, when you're in that position in your life. Um, and I had two years of, you know, having great success, enjoying what I was doing, but unfortunately, uh, my ego got in the road and I thought, I can do this smarter, faster, cheaper, I'll get more profit. And so my dynamics of my thinking shifted. Um, and so I came back to, um, not only when you do the abundance course, they have monthly follow-ups here at Varsity Lakes. And you can come and sit in the room and you can go through what is troubling you, what, where you are in your investment cycle. And so I came in and Roy said, what are you doing in here? I said, well, I was a surfer on the wave, everything was going beautifully and I stopped paddling and I fell off the back of the wave because of these issues. And then um, Roy started to analyse through it and that's when we worked out where the problems were and uh, because I didn't follow the steps that, uh, those steps that Roy will teach you, um, I made a stupid investment. Uh, and I put $200,000 into the transaction and um, I'm now in litigation with it because I didn't follow um, the strategy. So, um, you know, whatever you do, follow it, listen, it does work. Um, you know, I'm a, a product of the product that everything that Roy teaches you um, and the support that you get from that um, really can take you a long way and you can start enjoying you know, the life of abundance that everybody desires. So just on this matter, what he did, he, he paid a deposit on something, the real estate promised him he had a valuation uh, on this property on the basis of a handshake and a nod they were going to transfer the valuation across, came to after the transaction was put through, they wouldn't give him the valuation because the valuation didn't really exist and didn't stack up. Now he's saying that doesn't work because I can't get my funding and da 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 da. So they're having a bit of an argy bargy going on. He'll probably win the case, but it's annoying. And mm -hmm. what he did was break his own rules that we well, said. Well, your here. rules. And the rules were you don't go into the transaction without your due diligence and you don't go in and make it unconditional because you have lots of conditions until that happens. It was just a, an error of judgment. And, 
no one's allowed to make an error of judgment. That makes him and he comes back here and gets another shot of you know, heroin and get a royism <laughs> and get it done. So w what I love about Merlin is he's a real man. He's, he's able to you know show well. Okay, I, I'm not like walking on water here. I do things. But can I tell you, in two years to do a couple of million bucks and he produced a 200,000 income which is escalating at between 3.5% and 4% on its annualised amount, not just the amount, plus have been built in there about, what is it, $3 million worth of asset. Equity. Equity, plus pull out a 360,000 on that little, 320,000 on that little uh, transaction on land. Uh, and then you're really working hard. I mean, basically you don't work. But let's get clear. No, I do till 8 o'clock. <laughs> I rang him up the other day, I said, what are you doing? He said, I'm having lunch. <laughs> this is a big day. I said, why don't you come down here and, and, and get a look at this video and stuff, because I want you to come and see these people. And he's just lovely. He says, I'll come and have a little talk. He doesn't get paid to come and have a talk. He just come and have a little talk. Who's learning something here? Yeah. So if we give him a couple of tips, what would you say? Um, you don't want to... I, would, I, I need some advice. Okay, That's go ahead. That's why I'm here. <laughs> Go ahead. Clock's running. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I yeah. bought this product uh, last week. I went to Melbourne for a week's holiday. Okay. And I came across um, looking at the newspaper because I didn't have anything to do till 8 o'clock because I didn't have my computer with me. So I was reading the newspaper, having a coffee at a shop, and there was a restaurant for sale. And so I said, I would like to buy that. So I went to have a chat with the people, and the price they wanted was 650000 Okay. Yep. Um, what they wanted to do, as I discussed it with them, was to buy the business and then ask them why they were selling, because it had five years of very good track record. It was making $5,000 per week in income, in net income. So I asked them why they want to get out of it, and they told me that they were going into a bigger... It was a cafe, just cappuccinos and cakes, very simple business, and they were going into a 300-seat restaurant. So it was quite a big business. There was a lot of cash that was required to do it. Um, and I said, why do you want to go from a established to a risk? And he said, well, we need $120,000 to finish off this other restaurant. So I said to them, um, what about if I buy a part of your business for your 120,000? We worked out a price from the 650 down to 480 was the purchase price um, that we agreed on. And I put 120,000 into that and it effectively gave me a 25% um, 25 equity in their business. That gave me uh, $1,285 per week was my share for my investment. Not working it, not doing a thing to it, because I want to live up here in the sunshine. But um, I said, all right, that's great, I can do that. So I went to a money lender or a money partner, because I hate using my own money, which Roy really doesn't like you doing. <laughs> so I borrowed the 120,000 at 11%. That comes into $12,500 to service that debt um, per annum, and I get roughly $70,000 in gross income, and uh, when you take the servicing of it, I get $50,000 per annum, which is $1,000 a week for this exercise, and I put no money into the deal, and uh, I'm wondering how I would structure to... <laughs> Do so you think you've got a problem, really? <laughs> I need some help. Oh, I can imagine. Um, All together go, oh, <laughs> we're very sad, don't you think? I mean, I think we all should take five minutes silence just for the <laughs> bleeding heart here. What could we do, really? I don't know. So I'm wondering how I can, not for the tax agent up the back there, but how I can effectively structure that, structure that in a better way than having $1,000 income per week. Mm-hmm. And we have a way. Do we? Legally, yes, yes. That's what I'd like to know. Well, we won't. Talk. Who would like to know, by the way? Yep. We will probably have to do this 
in a few minutes, because they're all going berserk here, because we are so late, we're in such trouble, Merlin. Get yeah, <laughs> could go on. Who's enjoying this, by the way? We could have the rest of the time here for the next three days just talking to Merlin. <laughs> However, we do have other things. And I, I will talk to you about that, and we'll get that handled. Can I just, I, 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 this is really outrageous, but we, can we talk about the car, the, the Ferrari? Yeah. He does a Ferrari deal. Okay. Just amazing. There's a Ferrari in Melbourne. Well, you need a car to drive around in. And the guy is still shaking his head how he did this deal. And he, when he goes to Melbourne, he drives the Ferrari. And uh, it's a wonderful transaction. In fact, I have to take my head off to Merlin. That is the best transaction of all of them. But you'll have to wait to hear this one. This really? Obviously, yeah, because we we, we're we being... The, the things... Yeah, yeah. <laughs> we'll hear it. It's, a, it's, it's to be continued altogether. To be <laughs> continued.